All right, good morning, everyone. Hello, and welcome to another session of 30 Minutes with. This is Downtown Spokane's recurring webinar series where we bring to you and feature local experts to talk about some of the more pressing topics of the, of the day. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kevin Campbell. I am the Business Relations Coordinator for the Downtown Spokane Partnership. And here at the DSP, some of our, the core principles of our mission are to ensure the safety and vibrancy of the downtown core. So today we're going to be fe featuring Chris Syme, who is a member of the DSP ambassador team. If you've worked or been around downtown, you've more than likely seen the team in their blue uniforms walking around downtown. So we're excited to have you here today, Chris. Uh, Chris is going to be talking about uh, something known as SEPTED which is crime prevention through environmental design. So if you have any questions during Chris's presentation, uh, feel free to put them into the chat box. Otherwise, at the end of the session, after, after the prepared portion, we can uh, open things up to a live Q&A if you do have any questions then. And I'll also note that we do record these sessions and post them online. So all of this content you'll be able to reference and share later in the future. So with that, I'll go ahead and pass things over to you, Chris, if you are ready, uh, go ahead and take it away. And thanks for being here with us today. Yeah, hi. Um, so, um, SEPTED, yep, like you said, that's a uh, acronym for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. And um, two years ago, um, I was sent off to uh, take a basic course in that and um, got certified in basic SEPTED. And um, so basically, like Kevin was saying, you know, our goal here is to um, kind of you know, promote growth and everything down here. And SEPTED's a good way to help um, discourage a lot of negative activities, but can also help bring businesses to your location and encourage growth and positive activity in the community. And so um, SEPTED is based off of um, four basic principles. Um, as we go through this, you know, I'm just gonna keep it as basic as possible because uh, it's there's a lot of, um, different uh, elements and stuff on each and every principle. So we're not gonna go into too, too depthful, uh, you know, and we have a PowerPoint presentation too that's kind of explains a lot of stuff here. Um, but the four principles of SEPTED, um, in contrast to the approach of the addressing crime concerns by implementing visually affronting security or target hardening measures, such as locks, hard barriers, security gates, uh, security patrols, et cetera, um, SEPTED promotes quality and visually pleasing solutions that help aim to enhance the legitimate use of space. Um, so there's other elements and different ways to approach other than just grabbing a lock and putting up a fence. And uh, one of those is natural surveillance. And that's the ability for areas around your property to be seen naturally by occupants, employees, customers, or anybody passing by that's, um, to help drastically reduce negativity, negative activity in your area and potentially generate positive activities by providing an extra sense of safety. Um, we'll go into more details with each one of these on the PowerPoint. Um, natural access control, that's um, basically keeping unauthorized, non-legitimate type users, people out of spaces that they're not welcome in. Um, this will deter negative activity in restricted areas such as, you know, employee break rooms, uh, back areas, garbage recycling areas, things like that. Um, territorial reinforcement, um, that's reinforcing ownership of your property through clear identification, be it, you know, signs and such. Um, showing ownership indicates that, in indicates to unwanted people that um, your space is clearly designated as yours and is intended for use as such and discouraging any other forms of negative activity. Um, maintenance and management, that one's um, pretty important. Um, maintaining your property express occupancy and ownership, you know, showing pride in your storefront, be it, or, you know, the parking lot. Um, as with territorial reinforcement, consistent maintenance and management of your property shows that this space is frequently inspected and regularly maintained, adding to the notion that there may be eyes in, on at all times and help discourage negative activity. Um, so those four elements we can go more into on the PowerPoint. Um, and I'll go ahead and uh, get that up here for you. And let's see if I can. Well, 
we had to do a few changes here to get this to uh, work right. Okay, is that working for everybody or no? Yeah, that should work fine, Chris. Oh, I'm doing the PD, I don't know. Okay, I found it, hold on a second. This is gonna be better, so. Okay, I have to go to the beginning. So, um, Oh, Chris, we, uh, we still see the, the PowerPoint slides. If you um, okay. want to click on your screen share and maybe switch, switch over screens. Okay. Just going to close that one out then. Go back to screen share. Is that better? Yep, looks good. Okay. All right, so um, going back into the principles of SEPTED, you know, it's relatively a new approach to uh, security. You know, um, in contrast to the approach of addressing crime concerns by implementing visually affronting security or target hardening measures such as locks, hard barriers, and security gates, um, SEPTED promotes quality visually pleasing solutions like we had mentioned earlier. So it can be applied without interfering with the normal use of the space. It is easy to apply and can be economically um, easy to implement, especially if it is done early in planning stages. Um, if you have a new property that you're building, um, it's a good time to really consider um, SEPTED. And um, a lot of um, cities around the world, this is kind of an international program, but some cities um, actually have this written into their code or laws. If you're designing a building or be it a shopping center or something like, you know, whatever, um, there are septet elements that are required that you have to implement. Um, we don't really have any of that here in town, but um, um, it's also very simple and affordable. Um, there are rebates. Um, we actually had a rebate. I'm not sure how much was left of that, but um, you can also, get um, rebates through like a Vista for lighting, um, historic preservation if you're in a building and um, you can contact them and see if they can help with any kind of sept head type changes. And, um, but there are definitely um, ways to save money and it's really affordable. So again, here's the four principles of sept head. You know, there's a lot of strong overlaps and synergies among the four sept head principles like I mentioned earlier. And it may be useful to see all four principles as different facets of single technique for dealing with the security of physical environments. And um, there they are again, the natural surveillance. Um, that's just basic eyes on the street, as many eyes on the street as you can through, um, here we go. Um, you can see in that picture, there is a lot of like uh, good sight lines and that's really important with natural surveillance is having good sight lines around your properties. You know, um, are your windows blocked? Um, can you see outside? Can people see you? Um, are there trees, bushes blocking sight lines? You know, your employees going out to a parking lot. Um, are they able to see their car? And, you know, it helps eliminate um, ambush points. You know, um, somebody jumping out from behind a dumpster. You know, they might have been able to see them ahead of time. But um, the fundamental premise is that criminals don't want to be observed. Um, surveillance or placing the legitimate eyes on the street increases the perceived risk to offenders, um, which also increase the actual risk to offenders if those of preserving are willing to act when uh, potentially threatening situations develop. So the primary aim of surveillance is not to keep intruders out, although it can actually have that effect, but rather to keep intruders under observation. This results in discouragement for the negative activities. So, um, you know, the more people in a natural situation um, with eyes on the street, that really can help deter any kind of like criminal activity. Natural surveillance can 
also be achieved by a number of techniques, you know, with your windows, lighting, um, and like I said, the removal of obstruction, so you've got clear sight lines. And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about some lighting and, you know, things like that. So territorial reinforcement. Um, people naturally want to protect the territory that they feel is their own, you know. It's just like Clint Eastwood, you know, get off my lawn. Um, clear boundaries between public and private areas achieved by using physical elements such as fences, pavement, um, pavement treatment, art, signs, and good maintenance and landscaping are good ways to express ownership. And um, there's some examples around downtown. Um, let's see, uh, Wheatland Bank, right across from the park, they've got a big open area. Um, part of it is a public sidewalk on the outside edges. And as you kind of walk more towards the bank, that front area, it transitions into kind of semi-public. So technically it is private property, but it has public access. And you can see with the psychological kind of barriers with the treatment of the pavement, how it kind of changes. And they have like a treated pavement to kind of identify that, hey, this is, you know, our bank, this is our property. Um, on a commercial level, like a good example would be um, the big red ballers outside the one shopping center a lot of people like to go to. That's Target. Everybody knows. They see those red ballers and they pass those and there's a surface change and stuff and you're at Target. So, um, and it makes identifying it intruders and stuff much easier in such well-defined spaces. You can kind of tell when somebody's hanging out there and they shouldn't be or they're possibly up to something. So, and it helps discourage them by um, the visible ownership and acknowledgement of pride in your space. And again, you can see in the picture, you've got some large windows up above on the second level, you know, that kind of um, offers observation over be it like maybe there'd be a cafe open air cafe down there or something um, porches and sidewalks um, gives good interaction between neighbors um, the pedestrian area is well lit you can see the maintenance of the bushes and the trees um, basically the ground level uh, plants if you were to design a property you would want to maintain about a two foot level and any tree canopies, you want to limb those up to say about six feet to give proper sight lines. And uh, I did a septed out west at a property and um, they have trees. And even though they are kind of limbed up, they're really, really dense and makes it hard to see through the windows. <clears throat> and another example is a property I did in their parking lot and they had trees and it's something to consider when you plant trees and things is what are they going to look like five years ten years from now because what happened is they had these huge trees and the lights to light up the parking lot were up and basically surrounded by foliage so they didn't really have much of an effect so it's important as we'll get into one of the other um, elements here of maintenance that you kind of maintain um, vegetation and stuff like that to maintain proper sight lines and stuff. So you've got that natural surveillance available for identifying any situations. Um, natural access control. So that um, relies on doors and your fences and shrubs and other physical elements to keep unauthorized people out of a particular place. And if they don't have a legitimate reasons for being there. Um, Property located entrances, exits, fencing, landscaping, and lighting can subtly direct um, both foot traffic and vehicular traffic in ways that decrease criminal opportunities. Um, psychological barriers can be used to achieve the object of access control. These barriers may appear in the form of signs, paving textures, na nature strips, or anything that announces the integrity and uniqueness of that area. So yeah, signage is um, really important. Um, mostly a lot of it's for like wayfinding. If you've got people coming to, um, you're up in an office building, you know, and your clients can't find the building or, you know, the proper entrance to get to the directory that might be inside. 
um, those type of things um, are very important and also proper signage to keep people out of areas that they're not supposed to be in. And um, if you know trespassing, um, don't obstruct doors, you know, for exits. And um, in some of these pictures, you can kind of see like the very top picture, um, you can see they have their uh, landscaping done correctly and they've got fences and the sidewalks help naturally guide people towards the building. So, and you can see all the way to the back of that building to where maybe the entrance is. So, you know, those little natural things help guide people into areas and also kind of defines the property as far as what is public, what is semi-public and what is private. So down below, you can also see kind of like different texture changes along there with like guided pathways that help kind of direct people to where you want them to go and places that you don't want them to be. So moving on, maintenance and management, which is very, very important. Um, you can see in those pictures, it's pretty obvious that, um, you know, overgrowth of vegetation and stuff can really make your yard look dilapidated. And, you know, you've probably seen, you know, the one neighbor who might not take care of their property and they're more likely possible to get targeted. And uh, it really just kind of brings down the whole area anyways and shows, you know, a lack of pride and um, care of your place. And so other people will get that feeling that, hey, you know, these people obviously don't really care and they're more likely an opportunity for me to go in and do something. And be it even an alleyway, if the back of your alley looks horrible and you've got beer cans and things like that, it's just more of an opportunity for somebody to think that, yeah, Nobody pays attention to this area. It might be a good way to get into like the back door. So, you know, maintenance and management, this is related to the neighborhood's sense of pride in place and territorial reinforcement. The more dilapidated an area, the more likely it is to attract unwanted activities. And the maintenance and the image of an area can have a major impact on whether it become targeted. Maintenance and management need to be considered at the design stage, most likely, as the selection of materials and finishes will impact the types of maintenance. Regimes that can sustain over time, for example, we were talking about how plants and such can really take over, and if you don't maintain them, they can pretty much just eliminate any natural surveillance. So um, we'll talk a little about lighting here. And uh, lighting is very important. Um, it helps an individual observe their surroundings and respond to a potential threat. Um, as you can see uh, there in the middle, there's some examples of the different types of lighting because fixtures should be cut off or a full cut off to limit glare and a light trespassing. Uh, light pollution is basically what it means. You know, if you've got a lot of just open exposed bulbs like in the picture down below where you can see the guy put up his hand to cover the glare from that one single bulb, he's able to then see that there was actually somebody standing in that gate. And on the right and the left are a couple examples of cutoff style type lighting. And in the middle are the examples which you would probably more commonly see like in a parking lot. So over to the left, if it's just complete glare and light pollution going all over the place and somebody walking out to their car might not see somebody further off that could be waiting for them. And um, it just goes on to where you've got the best kind of cutoff lighting. And a lot of that is being implemented now more. And um, we didn't really mention that um, LEDs are basically the best way to go. They're kind of expensive at first, um, but they are getting more and more affordable and they are probably over time the best solution economically because uh, they don't use very much power. And um, there's still, you know, like I said, um, lighting um, rebates and stuff you can inquire with uh, a Vista. And incorrect lighting options can cause glare. So that's just the biggest issue is trying to find the proper lighting. And um, this one is kind of interesting. Um, we're starting to see a lot more of it around town, um, public art. And it can really be used to help deter negative activity. The statistics show that graffiti happens far less on murals than on a blank canvas, a blank wall. 
and public art can also help generate natural surveillance by encouraging positive activities in space. And public art also helps to show ownership and pride in your space. And um, you can actually use it also as a psychological kind of barrier. Once again, if you notice on the left to the top one, they had a blank wall, they ended up and made it look like there's more windows. And there's actually people painted in some of those windows. And same over on the far right, you can see they painted that um, with a person sitting on the balcony. So it kind of gives this psychological effect that, hey, I'm being watched. And um, on areas that you don't have windows, you could implement something similar to that to kind of give this false sense that I'm being watched. And in the middle, we have a lot of these around downtown that are already covered, um, like the control boxes at intersections and things, and even trash cans. Um, they're painting them, and that really helps deter graffiti. And I think a lot of people can say that they've seen that because I, you know, I walk around all over downtown and see these control boxes. And before they put those wraps on them, they were a common target for getting tagged. And so um, public art is another really good idea in spaces that you kind of want to reactivate or help deter any kind of negative activity. Um, I think Sandpoint has like an alleyway up there and they let some, uh, street artists and things go through and um, paint up in there and it helps deter any kind of negative activity and further on graffiti and we're seeing a lot of that there's some a lot of good local artists around that um, are doing their murals now and there's a lot of good spaces out there that could um, take advantage of that so um, that's the end of the presentation um, I can take any questions or go into any more further detail on anything if anybody's interested. Um, but just going over a few other things, um, wayfinding is some other SEPTED principles, you know, um, this, with the proper signage, um, choice of pathway routes to your problem spots, you know, those things you address so people can find your property. Um, Visibility wise, um, you know, what kind of social mix is around you? Um, do you have um, any other kind of uh, services, public utilities or anything that people should know about? Um, public toilets? Um, what is your after hour surveillance, be it cameras? Um, blind corner visibility, they have convex mirrors sometimes in some of those areas to help somebody before they get there, they can see around the corner. Of course, all your landscaping issues, um, lighting, territorial definition, your signs and cues, um, conflicting space use might be a good example is you, you have a business and your neighboring business has a, a lot that they don't take care of and the lights are not on at night and it makes it really difficult for people to come to your restaurant or park in that parking lot. So that would be something you would want to address to them that, hey, you know, let's work together and see if we can get your lights on and stuff because, you know, it's affecting my business. Um, so conflicting land uses and things like that, um, a graffitied up wall that somebody's not taking care of, you can maybe try to find a way to work together to try to get that wall painted and uh, get rid of the graffiti. And of course, management of the property, that's the biggest thing, you know, because they're just even cigarette butts out in front of your sidewalk. You know, we have our clean team and they do clean common spaces like sidewalks and things like that. Um, but we do know that there is a problem with like the recessed doors in downtown with um, people using them to sleep at night or duck in and do um, um, negative type activities and stuff and often leave trash and things like that behind. So. Um, if we everybody works together and gets that stuff type taken care of it really gives a better sense of pride in the neighborhood um, so that's also just reaching out to your neighbors and um, seeing you know if you can work together to solve issues that you notice in your neighborhood and you want to improve on those so um, different building materials you know the um, vandal resistant type materials now there's you know 
lot of seats have been taken out of downtown, but see, someone had a question. I've noticed a number of downtown properties have implemented designs that discourage. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it is starting to, um, I've done probably close to just under 15 SEPTED assessments that you can contact us and we can come. And it's mostly focused on the outside, but um, if you need somebody to come and kind of walk around your property and give you suggestions um, and possibly even give you a little bit of a report, um, we can do that. And you can um, go to our website and um, go under there, and I believe it's in kind of safety. Um, there's a link to um, request a SEPTED uh, assessment and uh, myself or somebody else will come out and we can meet with you or not and just walk around the property. We even come back down at night and take pictures um, to uh, see what the lighting's like. And even on those occasions, I've noticed that we times have to reach out to the city. Um, there's a particular area um, downtown where a lot of the uh, overhead street lights were out and it just made a lot of dark areas. And so, you know, I suggested that the people uh, contact the city about addressing the lighting. So that's pretty much all I've got right now. Um, I'm open to any other questions if anybody has any, or uh, you can contact us if you have any further questions. Um, I can be reached at um, security at downtownspokane.org. Um, you can reach out to me and ask any questions and uh, I can get back to you and hopefully give you an answer. Excellent. Thanks for that, Chris. And before we go, we're uh, nearly at time here, but I was just wondering if you might, um, on a more kind of broader note, just talk a little bit about the ambassador team and what your role is downtown um, and when it might be, you know, good for people uh, to call, the, you know, the security team, the ambassador team, maybe instead of just dialing 911. Correct. Um, yeah, you can reach us at 353-9111, but we patrol 80 square blocks of the bid, and that's um, no further south than the railroad viaduct. Um, we go the north bank of the river, we cover all the way out to Cedar, and all the way out to Brown. And um, But you can call us anytime for anything. You feel uncomfortable, if you feel you need like a safety walk and during the darker hours, we can send a team out there. But we basically patrol <clears throat> the bid and interact with people, businesses. Um, we do somewhat social work with the homeless. Um, a lot of us are trained in uh, critical incident situations for dealing with like the mental illness. Um, but um, we make contact with homeless people, um, offer them services, um, try to see you know if there's anything we can do to help them out, uh, refer them to shelters, um, but people can um, call us anytime, you know, if their car got broken into or they just see something that's not right. Um, but we're on patrol, we cover all of the whole bid and uh, we drive around in a truck in the morning and wake up people before a lot of people get downtown. So people don't have a hard time trying to get into their business if the door's blocked or something. But um, yeah, and we work with our clean team, you know, try to help fight graffiti and everything. But uh, we a multitude of stuff. We've even jump start cars. We've pushed cars out of the snow. Um, people, you know, help find their cars. You know, they forget where they park their cars downtown. That's actually something that's happened frequently and uh, help them find their cars. Um, we just overall just a, an enhancement to downtown because it's not all security that we do. We also give directions. Um, a lot of us have a good knowledge of um, downtown where businesses are and things like that. So um, just reach out to us and we'll, if we can't figure out what to do, we'll try to contact and figure out a way to get whatever it's needed to be done, done. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Chris. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, I would like to reiterate, if you do have any questions, if you're looking to do make any sort of SEPTED or security um, sort of adjustments to your area, please do reach out to us. As Chris said, you can reach out to security at downtownspokane.org or info at downtownspokane.org, and we'll make sure that gets in the right hands. Uh, and just visit our website, downtownspokane.org, and we'll have a lot more information for you there. 
You can also see uh, our upcoming other 30 minutes with sessions. We'll be uh, putting an emphasis in February on inclusion, diversity, and equity in the downtown area. So we're looking forward to those topics. Um, and if you have any other questions, just feel free to reach out to us. So thank you again, Chris. We appreciate you taking the time and sharing those kind of tips and tricks for the, um, the, for improving people's properties. And uh, I just want to say thanks again and have a great rest of the day for everyone else. Thanks.